please welcome Dr. Katie Sisapura. Hello. <clears throat> My talk's entitled From Pixels to Patients about ensuring equity in AI-driven medical imaging. But first of all, I wanted to start a little bit about how I came into this field and where my interest comes from. I started my journey doing a degree in physics, and I was lucky enough in my third year to take a module in medical physics. And it was at this point I really thought, this is where I can apply physics to the real world. I guess you could say I found my reason. I then joined the NHS and worked in the hospital and then worked as a researcher. My main focus is on optimization of imaging equipment and system capabilities to provide high quality diagnostic images. One of the main questions I get is, what's physics got to do with medicine? And my answer is always, everything. We don't always, we're not always patient facing, which is why people may not realize how much physicists do for healthcare. We're there to work with systems, technologies, equipment to ensure the best quality that we can provide for healthcare. In my current role, I'm chair of a research ethics committee. So these combination drives me with a passion for ethically responsible use of data to ensure equitable healthcare. As you're all aware, healthcare is the backbone of our society. It ensures that we live longer, healthier lives by providing essential services such as disease prevention, early diagnostics, and effective treatments. Artificial intelligence is currently transforming healthcare, from supporting healthcare professionals by providing accurate information to improving workflow to hopefully reduce waiting times. In fact, healthcare is one of the largest fields for the application of AI developments, and not least in medical imaging. We're entering a time where AI can assist detection of diseases in medical imaging with pinpoint accuracy, with the potential to save millions of lives. Let's consider an example where you're worried about something on your skin, maybe a mole. You could take a photo and upload that into an AI system which can inform you whether or not you need to see a healthcare provider. But what if I told you that the key to these benefits is not at these endpoints of detection and improvement, but it lies right at the beginning in the quality and the representation of the data that we feed into these systems from the very beginning. So, First of all, we have to think about how a medical imaging AI system gets to the point of being able to de detect diseases in images. <clears throat> During the development of an AI product, the AI system has to be trained. Now, this is quite different data to the data that's been talked about today, where it's generative, where it's quite wild <laughs> and from everywhere. The data that's used to train medical imaging AI systems is quite specific. Expert healthcare professionals annotate images, identifying and labeling regions of interest such as tumors, fractures, pathologies, and other, any other abnormalities. This is known as establishing ground truth. The AI system is then trained using this ground truth to then start automatically detecting these regions of interest in the images. The system then has to be tested on a different set of images to validate the system and assess how accurate that detection process is. This process is repeated and repeated and repeated and continuously improved once implemented as it's fed more and more data. So these AI systems are trained and tested on data. So it is essential that the data they are given is high quality. Annotation is not a minimal task. It is quite time consuming and needs to be incredibly accurate. But also we need to ensure that the data, the images and the information is representative of the patients that the AI system will eventually be used with. If there are any limitations in any of this, then this can lead to something called bias. There are many potential sources of bias in medical imaging AI. 
The first is that a relevant and unmet clinical need needs to be identified to ensure that the AI system will be beneficial to healthcare. Second is during the data collection itself, bias can be introduced. This is because there are many different types of imaging equipment to manufacturers, there are different uh, techniques to acquire images, and this leads to a large variation in image data. Then there can be data selection bias, where the data is just from a small group of people and doesn't represent the wider population. The next step is establishing ground truth, and again, bias can be introduced at this point where there's errors or inconsistency in those annotation processes by the expert. And then the AI system itself can be biased, where the model itself, based on the way that it's learning and trained, can actually create biases that can exacerbate through time. But for the remainder of my talk, I'm now going to focus on the bias that comes with data selection and the impact that this can have further down the line. If the data used to train an AI system is from one particular group, then this leads to problems when it comes to trying to use that AI system in a different group. These differences could be based on ethnicity, gender, age, socioeconomic status. There are many demographics that impact on disease prevalence, so how common that disease is in a group, and presentation, so how that disease looks or presents in an image. If an AI system is only trained to recognize disease that are common in a single group, or only present, present in those images in a certain way, it will not be able to recognize diseases in other groups of people. Let's go back to the idea I presented at the beginning, where we're talking about being able to take a photo and upload it into an AI system. In fact, developments have already started in this area. However, the data... Sorry. Oh, it's come back on. The data sets, <laughs> the data sets um, that were available and used to train these systems are predominantly light skin colour images. And the AI applications are found to not be able to detect lesions on darker skin tones. A recent review found that in this, the most commonly used data set, of the images where ethnicity was stated, of the 2,500 images available, only 11 were from darker skin tones. This has led to researchers and developers to consider the training data sets more carefully, and recent developments have attempted to ensure the data sets are more representative, representative of the population into to which they're going to be applied. So, what is high quality data and what is representative data? High quality data is accurate. It is complete and free from noise. It's related to the acquisition and the annotation of the data sets. On the other hand, and often in conflict with that, is representative data, which has to include diverse images from different demographics, ensuring that this AI model performs well across all population groups. Unfortunately, Many data sets that are available today suffer from biases, such as overrepresentation of single groups or underrepresentation of other groups. However, this is not easy to resolve. This is a major challenge. Data sets are impacted by access to healthcare, both nationally, internationally, and for different demographics. There are also requirements on image data sets that have to be met for them to be able to be used. In Im images have to be anonymized, which means all patient information is removed before being used. Patients have to have consented for these images to be used to be developing AI systems. Also, these um, images have to be data sets that are readily available and images are very, very large in, in terms of data. And so storage, transfer, all of these things are a big problem as well. 
Most data sets that fit these criteria actually come from clinical trials. Now, these are often undertaken in certain demographical areas, certain geographical areas, sometimes in single institutions, and sometimes even just on one piece of equipment. And so here is where we have the problem. So how can we start to address this issue? Well, as I mentioned, it's not easy at all. Most images are taken for a specific clinical reason. AI development is not often in the mind of the healthcare professionals during a very busy medical imaging department. So this can lead to huge variation in data sets. So to address these issues, we need to focus on several key areas. First, data collection, or the imaging, must follow more standardised protocols and include diverse data sets. This means sourcing images from various hospitals, clinics, ensuring a mix of age, gender, ethnicity, and any other relevant factors. But consent and ethical practice is essential and often makes this hard to achieve. Secondly, data annotation by healthcare professionals is a, is a task that has to be done properly. There has to be consistent labelling practices to ensure high levels of accuracy. But this isn't easy to do, and it is a time-consuming task that cannot be replaced. Thirdly, robust data management has to be in place. Management systems are essential to maintain data integrity and facilitate access for AI developers. Finally, developers need to be considerate and transparent of their data sources. In summary, the key to unlocking the full potential of medical imaging AI and in wider healthcare lies in the quality and diversity of the data we use to train the systems. I urge all of you to advocate for better data practices in our communities and our organisations. Together we can build AI systems that are not only accurate but are also fair and inclusive. Imagine a future where AI transforms healthcare for everyone, regardless of who they are. And as we move into this future where AI improves outcomes for everyone, never forget that it always starts with your data. Thank you. Thank you very much. Fantastic talk, really insightful.